It's wonderful to see that um, through the simple practice of short moments repeated many times and through taking the support of the rest of the mainstays, there's a balanced view that naturally develops with regard to everything in life. And this balanced view means that we just see everything more and more clearly. We become more and more stable, more and more settled. There's a, a certainty about who we are and about the nature of reality. We become comfortable with the flow of data, our seamless flow of experience. We see that we can stop struggling to control and manipulate just the way that things naturally are. For myself, this has been a huge relief, just to stop efforting and struggling with all of my thoughts, emotions and sensations, with all of this data. And the way that I've developed that ever-increasing sense of ease is just simply by showing up in the Four Mainstays by repeating the short moments. Just a short moment of allowing whatever description happens to be there at the moment just to be exactly as it is. Just resting naturally. Resting deeply in this power of great benefit. And the insight that this provides on all of our experience I find completely fascinating. So for example, with the question about the that the pain and the heartbreak you feel when you, you hear your child crying. And to know deeply that that power of love and care and concern is really the power of love and care and concern for, for all beings and for everything. And to open out and expand all of our data to discover this limitless potential to be of benefit. And this was something of a surprise for me, something of a shock, you might say, because I'd led a very self-centered life, very self-focused. And to discover that just by showing up in the four mainstays, I started to live a life that was of benefit for all. And this began to happen whether I liked it or not. I didn't really have much choice about it. Because just by showing up, just by allowing myself to be for these short moments, participating in trainings, coming to open meetings, developing a relationship with the trainer, spending time with other people that were also committed to really getting to know themselves as open intelligence. Then this obsessive self-focus just relaxed. And I began to see that I could stop, stop giving myself such a hard time for everything that I felt, for all of my wild and unpredictable thoughts, for my physical sensations. And um, really stop forcing myself to be any way at all, stop trying to contrive something like gratitude. I mean, that's such a relief and it feels really awkward and really uncomfortable when we're trying to contrive anything. When we take up any fixed reference point or idea about how we should be and then we try and live up to that. We try and act it out. But it really is. It's like acting a part that we don't really feel comfortable at doing. And we feel that tension. And so just to relax for these short moments and to allow yourself to be exactly how you are, however you are. It's so powerful. And this is the way that you discover this stability. This is the way that you become certain that open intelligence is always the basis of your experience. It's always accessible, it's always on, and it's always completely beneficial. So with something like physical pain, and everybody experiences physical pain in different degrees at different times in, in their life, and um, I injured myself um, about a year and a half ago um, with a physical injury on my shoulder. And it was really interesting to apply the training really specifically in this instance. So, first of all, with the actual physical sensations of the pain, 
well, what happens when I actually apply short moments to these sensations? It was really, it was just a fascinating experiment to find out what's really going on here. Because I had all the stories running about, you know, what the pain was, about how I'd been in pain all day, or, you know, it was this kind of pain or that kind of pain, and all these stories about it. And then there were all of the associated stories about, you know, how this was going to stop me from doing all of the things that I loved doing, and how this was terrible, and why was it always me that got these injuries, and... Look at all those happy people out there enjoying themselves. How dare they? You know, all of this world of descriptions around this one sensation. And just to apply the short moments there was, was fascinating, actually. And I could see that the pain wasn't somehow separate or apart from open intelligence. It was also only known due to open intelligence. It was shining forth from open intelligence in a completely natural way. And in these short moments, I could actually allow it to be there without needing to do anything with it, to develop this balanced view with these sensations too. And so there was such a sense of relief there that first of all, I could use this as an opportunity to continue training up open intelligence, to apply the short moments here as well. And so there was a physical relaxation that accompanied that, which is actually a great way to heal the body. But there was also a lessening of all the, the tension around it, all of the stories that I'd built up around it, all of the, the drama and the trauma that was so easily, or could so easily have been played out. And instead, the whole experience happened in a much more easeful way. And it didn't mean that I didn't explore practical possibilities for what I could do to help the healing. You know, was any medicine required? Was there any other treatments that might be suitable? Were there anything else that I could consider that would help the healing? But that all happened from this space of complete open-hearted ease. I wasn't giving myself a hard time. Or if I found myself doing that, it was an opportunity to return to the Four Mainstays. So it's beautiful to see how practical this training is. You know, we, we really can apply it in this direct experience, the, the immediate perception of our experience. We recognize open intelligence there. I mean, it's such a relief to see that our lives are perfect for this recognition to take place. So whatever data you have is the perfect data for you to continue training up open intelligence and this beneficial potency, outshining this data within this vast expanse of pure seeing to discover that you are always stable and clear. Your mind is like a cloudless sky. All of the data just stream effortlessly through and, and leave no trace like the, the flight path of a bird in the sky. And to come to know that for yourself in your own direct experience is the most empowering and delightful way to live. It makes life easy. But it also means that you become very, very potent. Because all of your data and all of your thoughts about who you are and what you like and what you're good at and what you're not good at can just be allowed to be exactly as they are. And you find yourself stepping up. You find yourself stepping up into your beneficial potency. Again, whether you like it or not. And it makes life so exciting. It's such an adventure. You never know what's coming next, but there's no need to know. You become comfortable with this, this abyss of bliss. And again, with the idea that there's a lot of work to do. We can develop a balanced view with this data too. Um, so there's no extreme position that needs to be taken. All, all ideas about this are, are also naturally and effortlessly included within this vast spread of open intelligence. So we are already perfect and everything is already perfect. However, that doesn't mean that we become completely passive. Our active participation is also perfect. 
And that can just be as simple as showing up in the four mainstays. It, it doesn't have to be a huge struggle. I mean, all of you, just by being here, have taken a huge stand for education in the nature of mind, for living a life that is of benefit to all. And how powerful to do that. What more important contribution could you give back to the world? Each one of us becomes these demonstrations, these, these beacons of benefit. Just spreading this stability. Seeing that we take responsibility for our own data. We don't take responsibilities for other people's data, but by our example, other people see what's possible. And I'm sure all of you have seen this in different relationships in your life. Just by you showing up with this complete open-heartedness, one short moment at a time, other people can't help but be affected by this pure transmission. Sometimes it takes a little time, because people are so used to emphasising their data. But again, you show up completely open-hearted. And people recognise what's possible for them too. So very naturally, very gently, very organically, this spreads around the world. This spreads throughout human society, completely revolutionising the kind of human society that is possible, that we all know is possible and, and that we all want to live. And suddenly we can contribute to that. For me that was so exciting. I become very disillusioned, quite hopeless and pessimistic about the state of the world and now I've never been more optimistic particularly when I see the, the children that are here growing up in this kind of environment I mean what kind of incredible powerful beings are they going to be how expansive are their contributions going to be and how beautiful to give them this gift I couldn't think of a more beautiful gift to give to any child and the gift of your stability and open intelligence, the gift of the option of the Four Mainstays lifestyle. 